<laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My uh, cell phone says it's 6 p.m. We'll trust that it's better than that battery clock up there. Tuesday, June 19th, 9th, excuse me, town board meeting is called to order. First item on the end is Pledge of Legions. Uh, Mr. Eiser, would you, see as how you received your award today, would you like to lead us in the pledge pertaining to your professionalism and your service? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Approval agenda for the meeting. Any changes? Item 3, approved minutes of May 12, 2015, town board meeting. Okay. Anything? The only thing, uh, Judy, I should have brought this to your attention before the bullets. We'll fix the bullets on there. Or, or, oh, this is actually time and then we're down here. But I'll make a motion to approve the minutes with that questions of the bullet and numbers. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Yeah, I just have the um, question as to the um, bold ripped EMS and fire. Um, is that why are those what? highlighted? Um, right, number five, it's, it's that's the training. Okay, that's how. Okay, RIT training and no training, EMS had street drugs. Okay, gotcha. Okay, any other notations? And the motion was by Kathy? Yep. And seconded by Bill? Yep. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 aye, aye. Any opposed? Item four, public comment period. Uh, people wishing to address the board limited to two minutes each with the public comment period limited to a total of 30 minutes. Anybody wishing to speak to the board on any topics tonight? Mr. Ronhead. Anyway, I was at the Planning Commission meeting last night and had a hard time hearing what you guys were talking about in there. So appreciate a little bit of volume, I guess. Okay. I think I have money, huh? Well, I can hear you. <laughs> All right, anybody else? Hearing none, we'll call the public comment period closed. We'll move on to our monthly reports from departments. Uh, Fire Department, uh, Chief Don Bone. Good evening, town board citizens. Um, we had a pretty smooth month last month. Uh, we only had 27 calls for service. Uh, we had 18 EMS calls. Uh, we only had one motor vehicle accident. Uh, was a very serious accident uh, on 48th Street that uh, if the gentleman hadn't been out of the vehicle when it got rear-ended, it would have been more likely fatality. So, um, but going on for the month, uh, we did have two false alarms, uh, one in the town of Saratoga and uh, one at a residence in the town of Grand Rapids. Um, fire alarms in residential settings. Uh, we did have five wildland fires, though. So even though it greened up, we're still getting grass fires uh, getting started. Uh, a couple of them actually have been due to faulty catalytic converters and stuff. Uh, people don't realize that that little stuff, when those catalytic converters break up, they'll blow hot stuff out of that uh, exhaust and can get some grass fires going. So uh, we did have a couple of those, and uh, one actually a uh, fairly big violation of a normal burning permit. Uh, when you get a burning permit for burning a brush pile, we're talking a six by six by six pile, not piles the size of the building. So um, you say that uh, permit doesn't always guarantee you won't be having a chat with our police department or the DNR. Uh, and then we had one mutual aid standby for Wisconsin Rapids when they had a uh, fire at the craft mill. Um, our training for the month, uh, the RIT is um, not having their training this month um, due to scheduling conflicts. Uh, our EMS uh, will be meeting tomorrow night with our medical director, Dr. Wesley. Uh, he is the medical director for United Ambulance and also our first responder squad. Um, he's out of the Twin Cities area. He's a very, the people that, he's the guy that wrote the medical books when they go to school for EMS, medical uh, first responder, EMT, stuff like that. His name's on the book, so we're pretty proud of having somebody of that caliber being our medical director. So he is uh, coming to meet with uh, some of the groups tomorrow evening and bounce some ideas off. Um, fire, uh, obviously we got our new ladder truck in service last week. Uh, we are 
looking at doing training on the 15th. We'll probably be over at Mid-State Tech again, uh, training with that, getting everybody more familiar with it. Uh, be out tomorrow or Thursday evening with the officers going over some of the details of the truck and uh, doing our just general training with the whole fire department on the 15th. I guess our big thing for the month coming up is our fireman's picnic is going to be on Saturday this year, not Sunday like we've been for many, many years. Uh, we had to change it due to the uh, parade falling on Father's Day, so we're the following week. And then the Lions Club on the 27th, uh, same events. We'll be having a lawn more racing starting at 2 o'clock, band starting at 2 o'clock until 11 o'clock. Fun for everybody all day. Uh, we will be having uh, the old fire safety trailer will be on be, being utilized for uh, child uh, fire prevention training, and we'll also have the Fort McCoy Fire Department is bringing their new version of the uh, fire safety trailer up, which is real similar to the one that we're looking at, and we started the fundraising process for. It, so um, people will get a little idea of what 20 years of progression in uh, fire safety can uh, hopefully uh, materialize by the end of the year. Any questions? Shirley? Yeah, um, could you uh, tell us a little bit about the fire truck? I did, when they got repaired, right? And how much it cost and what repairs were done? Uh, we had a bunch of corrosion issues that were taken care of on it. Uh, there was some corrosion on the lighting, the scene lighting things of that nature. Uh, it's a 16-year-old truck, so we did a bunch of preventive maintenance on it, so hopefully we can get uh, continued use out of it for years in the future. Uh, I haven't received the bill yet, so I don't know exactly what the dollar amount. I believe it was 15000 is what was budgeted. 15 was budgeted. Mm -hmm. For doing the work on it. Truck cost was 250000 if that I'm sure you knew that, though, right? Yeah, I knew that. Okay. Anything else? Here now, do you want to move on to the safety department report? I don't think there's anything, is there? No. That's Safety's good been news. Doing good. Uh, still uh, with the road crew out on the on the roads doing patching and stuff. We encourage people to uh, you know slow down, pay attention to the guys that are out there. They're into the mowing and stuff like that, so we'll try to give them some room. Uh, this morning we did actually have to close down a section of 32nd Street uh, with a power outage right down in the bottom of the Bloody Run Hill uh, just for the power company's safety to be working down in the bottom of that hill so we could make sure that we didn't have somebody come over the hill and find out there's a whole bunch of people working at the bottom. So, um, But so far we have not had any incidents and we're trying to keep it that way. Questions? Hearing none. Thank you. Police Department. Uh, Chief Mel Peterson, what do you got today that's... Good evening, look, everyone. A little less calls, way it looks, huh? Excuse me? We had a few less calls. Yes. Uh, for May of this year, Grand Rapids Police Department, we handled uh, 421 calls for service. <laughs> that compared to 480 calls for service last May. It's about a 12% decrease in calls and then the board members should have a breakdown of, of those calls. Uh, police department issued 39 written warnings, 13 municipal ordinance citations, and 57 traffic citations during the month of May. Uh, we also participated in the Wisconsin Department of Transportation Click It or Ticket campaign, which was held May 18th through May 31st uh, throughout Wisconsin. Everybody probably saw the, the big media campaign that they had on all the radio, TV, you name it. Uh, during the course of that campaign, uh, we issued 34 traffic citations, 26 written warnings, and there was one uh, criminal arrest on a warrant. Three of the citations related to safety restraint uh, violations, and overall, uh, the Grand Rapids Police Department uh, spent approximately 103 hours on the uh, traffic enforcement during the uh, click and ticket campaign. Uh, on May 6, I attended the dedication to the new public safety training center at the Fox Valley Technical College in Appleton. 
uh, guests and dignitaries had an opportunity to tour the training center after the dedication. And the reason I bring this up, and I think I provided uh, a copy of their training facility there, uh, it, it's really a fabulous training center, not only for law enforcement, but also for fire service. Uh, I've, you know, through the course of my career, I've had an opportunity to see different training facilities all over the country, and this by far is one of the state-of-the-art ones. Uh, a lot of training facilities will have one or two real key components to it, and this Fox Valley has it all, and it's all right there. Uh, and it's close proximity to us, so uh, uh, it, it'll really enhance our training here in this area throughout all of central Wisconsin. And if you ever have a chance to go over there and attempt some training, by all means, uh, do it because it's it's really really nice facility. Grand Rapids Auxiliary assisted with a jigsaw run uh, benefiting autism held at the Southwood County Park on Saturday, May 2nd. And they also helped out with the Choose to Reuse event on Saturday, May 16th at the Town Garage. Uh, basically, the auxiliary was assisting with traffic control at, at both those events for the uh, participants of uh, each of those events. May 13th, uh, full-time certain part-time officers completed our mandatory emergency vehicle operation course training at the uh, Mid-State Technical College. Uh, I'd like to give a special thanks to our part-time officer, Steve Spath, who uh, is an instructor for that uh, training, and he was uh, able to come in and we were able to get all uh, the ones that uh, needed it uh, trained on that day. Uh, Basically what that does is that certifies us for the next two years in an emergency vehicle operation. It's a two-year requirement that that be done. Uh, May 16th, the Grand Rapids Police Department participated in the Wisconsin Department of Justice sponsored uh, prescription drug take-back initiative. Again, this was held throughout Wisconsin. Throughout Wisconsin. Uh, this initiative is a continuation of the collaborative efforts previously conducted by the uh, DEA with state and local law enforcement agency. And the focus is on removing those potentially dangerous uh, pharmaceutical uh, drugs and substances from our state's medicines cabinets, preventing them from either being used or sold illegally on the street, or if they're flushed down the toilet, then they end up in the water supply. Uh, if you all recall, Previously, up until last fall, that was always sponsored federally by the DEA, but then they kind of pulled out of it. Uh, there were some changes in the law, so we actually took our drop box out for a while because nobody knew how we were going to get rid of it and what the cost of getting rid of it. Well, Wisconsin Department of Justice stepped up to the plate, and now they're sponsoring it, and uh, we're moving forward from there, so it uh, worked out real well. A couple other matters on uh, the 19th and 20th, Officer Arndt completed the uh, operated motor vehicle while intoxicated, the standard field sobriety test instructor training at the Madison Police Department. Uh, Officer Arndt is now certified as an instructor for this uh, uh, course topic, and it'll be a valuable asset for our department so that he can conduct refresher training and, and keep everybody up to speed on, on uh, standard field sobriety tests uh, used by the by the state. Uh, vehicles are doing well, just normal routine maintenance. And once again, if anybody ever wants to stand by or stop by and talk or chat, so feel free to stop by. Any questions? Bill? Hi. Uh, on the barcode for evidence, are you familiar with that, the county line? I I'm familiar with it, but I wasn't aware it was going countywide. Yeah. Or the system is probably available countywide. Yes. Yes, I, 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 I was at this public safety meeting the other day. Okay. I think we're the only department don't use the, the bar. Okay. So. And then the Ellis program, are you familiar with that? Yes, I'm familiar with that. And, and will you be attending that? It's I have week. been attending, oh. yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, the actual training for it. Uh, I don't know if I'll go. I may have one of the other officers go. Uh, I'm, I'm familiar with it, and that 
Can you just explain what it is? Excuse me. Can you explain what it is? Alice, uh, I don't have any of the material with me here, uh, but basically it's one of many systems out there that schools, businesses, uh, colleges are going to for an active shooter or any type of uh, serious crisis at, like I said, you know, a school, a business, uh, the municipal building here. And basically, it uh, they instruct how previously the thought process was barricading in place and trying to hide from the bad guy, locking your door, shutting off the lights, things like that. Now, under the Alice system, it's more of if you can get out safely without jeopardizing yourself or your students or, or your employees or whatever, now they're saying get out, get away as, as far as you can, and then that way, what, what they, after action reports on a lot of these school shootings or, or business shootings, they're seeing that people were barricading in place and that's where they're shot and killed. So now they're going to this Alice, and, and there's other variations out there. Alice isn't the only one, but basically what they're saying, if you can get out, if you have a shooter down at one end of the building and you're down here and you got an exit door out of your classroom, out of your uh, work area or whatever, uh, get out, go, don't barricade in place, get out and go and run as fast as you can and, and get away from the scene. Once the scene is secure, we'll catch up with you to come and interview you or talk to you if we need to. But uh, it, it's kind of, they want to go to this countywide. Uh, I think Portage County has gone to it countywide. And I think right now there's a little reluctance by some of the school districts. But uh, I know they have the, the training coming up. And uh, like I said, uh, I don't know if I'll attend or one of my officers will attend, but it's just good knowledge to have and have basically everybody on the same page, especially in, in Wood County and the reason Portage County. If something were to happen, say, at River Cities High School or Lincoln High School or even Mead School on the other side of town, we're all going, okay? So that's why there's a move to go countywide, everybody, so everybody's on the same sheet of music, so we're not, you know, stepping over anyone and just creating uh, a bad situation from becoming even worse. So uh, we'll see how that goes. So. Okay, thank you. So that would currently be in place in Borders County, is what you're saying? Yes. Okay, My so. understanding and talking with the uh, coordinator over in Portage County that they, it's my understanding and talking with her that they have gone to that county wide in Portage County. Would that be the grant school then or is that because it goes by the district that makes the choice? No, that would include grant school. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> Grant is kind of a unique situation because they're part of the Rapids public school yep. system. Yep. The Rapids public school system hasn't adopted that yet. Mm -hmm. So when we did our training over there last fall, we were still using Wisconsin Rapids policy, mm -hmm. but there was some discussion by the Portage County deputy who's kind of leading up this, the Alice training for them or the Alice initiative uh, over in Portage County on you know what it is and, and trying to get grants so grants familiar with it okay and so are the rest of it because we've had the, the training and, and discussion uh, that's primarily being led by the wisconsin rapids police department so all right sounds good any other questions Patty? yeah i don't have a question i just want to say that um i appreciate your officers being at the choose to reuse just the presence of them made that traffic control I mean, just, you know, so smooth ins and outs and parking. And um, it was also nice that people did comment that your um, people or our people were there. And um, 
they just said it's nice to see how cordial they were and they're not just always out there writing a ticket so it, you know so it's nice they're really <laughs> yeah. they were doing some shopping yeah <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks again, Mel. All right, thanks. In Treasury Report, we do not have one. Our Treasurer is on vacation. Item 6 is a resolution, 2015-16. Uh, to adopt or deny the removal of restriction for parcel 07-00801G and 07-00801HA as a recorder on the Town of Grand Rapids Resolution number 30.98. The Planning Commission the last evening uh, moved affirmative, is that correct? Okay. Um, well, what they ended up, actually, the motion was to uh, allow having the three stipulations removed but they were also saying that with having the three stipulations removed, that um, they would like to have it zoned um, commercial. Um, Business, B1? Yeah, B1 commercial. Mm -hmm. um, the reason being is that the current lot two that is um, in this resolution has two uh, buildings. And so, um, in a residential area. It is currently zoned residential. Mm -hmm. And so it has just two standalone buildings with no home. And um, there was concern about having warehousing in a residential area. So that's why they wanted it to be zoned as commercial um, because also um, we have ordinances in place that um, say that you can't have just a garage on a residential property. Mm -hmm. So that was the concern. We really, the plan commission really um, likes the idea that um, Mr. Mosier is uh, looking at having the property used as storage for his um, electrical business, which it's not going to be like a retail outlet. It will be just for his um, purpose of loading up a truck and storage of electrical equipment. Um, so that is the type of business that the town of Grand Rapids is, you know, looking at. But there was just concern that we may be setting precedents if we don't have that zoned as commercial. Okay, but uh, I, I think what we could consider is just the removal of the restrictions that are on the lot. Did you find anything different, Judy? Today when we uh, had conversation. Well, you can't do anything on the rezoning. No, I understand all. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all we could do is remove the restrictions at this time, but it'd have to have a application for a rezone, and then the... Uh, uh, the plan Commission would have to meet on the Comprehensive Plan Future Land Use Map. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a 30-day notification of public hearing that has to be in place for that. So any rezoning, it would take a few couple of months in order to do. Mm -hmm. So um, is, I guess, may I ask um, Mr. Moser or um, Roosh. Mr. Roosh if that's... Yeah. Well, I think they would need to know the steps and let us know if they want to go any farther. Mm -hmm. I mean, the steps are pretty clear that it's, it's if uh, the use is changing <coughs> from what was... Uh, uh, written into our ordinances that uh, it being it is considered then warehousing storage of whatever it would become business, uh, which in our sense is just a um, another area that needs to have public input and then determination whether the board feels that's the rest thing. And it just takes time more than anything. Mm -hmm. Did you? Um, I, I did, I, I realize what you were asking me. Um, I did find out that in, if the board would pass a resolution, that signed notarized resolution is all that would be needed to remove the restrictions. It would be a matter of, of you as the owner um, 
taking this resolution to the register of deeds and it would be a $30 uh, recording, recording fee. fee. Okay. So, um, so I see a couple more hands. You got that's one more? Right. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was I'm just going to ask for a verification for, um, for what you just repeat exactly what you just said. So there could be a motion made mm -hmm. removing these you could move remove the restrictions, restrictions off of it tonight right and then he would take this resolution to the county or the courthouse yep. have the restrictions removed from the property title mm -hmm. and then from that point make application for make application zoning change for, okay for a zoning change and then you because of the zoning change, the comprehensive plan has to be, be reviewed too, and that's why the 30 day requirement is. Mm -hmm. Dan, question? Well, so tonight, all we're, all we're talking about is either approving or denying the removal of the restrictions. Correct. That's it. Okay. That's Bill? all that's, that's, that's all we agenda. Can. Uh, agenda. That's all we can do. Bill? Okay. So, by removing these restrictions, it's still. There's two garages on one lot, correct? Mm -hmm. Two garages on one lot, and a house. Is that all one lot now? No, no, no. It's two so, lots. so by removing those restrictions, does a house have to be built on there within two years? It would be under the current ordinance. Under the current. And that's where it would tie no, in. No, just under these restrictions. Well, we, we don't we don't have in our ordinance that if you have a, a zoning we do do we do yeah mm -hmm. uh, garage on a vacant lot if it changes hands uh, has to have all spilled Sorry. on it within two in years two years that is right. correct so, so that would come into play yes Bill okay. so, so so that would have to be I lost my train of thought Sorry. Sorry. Kathy anything not really. Um, I was trying to think of, well, A, if if they're going to want to rezone, then we need to remove mm -hmm. restrictions yeah. because right. we clearly are not allowing it to with one of the restrictions. Right. Mm -hmm. But if we remove the restrictions and the properties are not sold, there's nothing to Mr. Roosh. He's, there's no negative consequence to him. The only negative consequence that I am hearing is if he then sells one of the lots, the lot. if, if that lot is going to be used for a business purpose, you do need to rezone, mm -hmm. and the other lot that maintains the garage, or is it the lot that's selling that has the garage? No, the lot that, there's two lots. There's a lot with one house. A and lot then there's one house. Two and then small, there's a two-stall garage. Yeah. Yep. And then there's the other lot that has just a garage. No, two garages. Two garages, two garages on it. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if that lot is rezoned commercial, then there's no house requirement building that because it would fall. That is but correct. if it's not rezoned and, and sold. It's sold, you realize you need to build on it within two years. Right. Yeah, okay. and that's why after okay. discussing yesterday, we wanted to, because mm -hmm. I would sell it to Mr. Moore. Okay. And he doesn't have plans to build off. House, I don't know, so. And I guess last night we um, forgot the part about having to have that. Um, the B1 commercial? Well, no, we plan. remembered that part, but it was the um, comprehensive plan that part. We yeah. forgot that. But you really couldn't have acted upon it anyway because it wasn't, it wasn't noted as an agenda item. Right. So, I mean, we understand the recommendation. Is, is a verbal recommendation at this point in time from the Planning Commission. So you have to go back to Planning Commission, uh, get the get the pro, the 30-day period leads to it, mm -hmm. and it takes, the town board takes action and uh, approve or denies the change. Anything else, though? Chairman, I, I just have one question. Mm -hmm. I, I find this very unusual that the town board got involved with basically deed restrictions. Yeah, I understand that too. And actually, I was on the town board when this one was put on, and I have no idea why it was put on. Oh. So, you can blame I, I, me. I was part of it. I probably voted for it. Okay, so, 
We're so trying to correct an error. Is what we're doing. Oh, well, that's that's, that's a little bit short of it. Yeah, it don't belong on there. Yeah. As far as the town board is concerned, we want to remove the restriction. That's and right. So it don't whichever belong. resolution number that is, I will make that motion. <laughs> It's it's there. I've got them the same resolution, but it will be the one that says the plan commission recommended discussion and um, approval. The approve the approve the removal of the restrictions, and the and the town board also does the same thing. So, and I'll second that. Okay, motion bill second. Patty, any further discussion? All right, so you clearly understand the process then, and we'll get the. If this proof, I should get the motion first. Yes. Well, actually, here is the application that you will need to fill out for the rezoning, and you can get that back to the girls in the office. Okay. Um, I believe she said they probably will end up having a meeting like the 22nd, 22nd then yep. Yep. for the plan commission. Okay. Um, but at that point, then I would need 30 days because statutes say we have to do a 30-day notice for a public hearing for the comprehensive change. So we probably aren't going to see it to the town board until the August meeting. Yeah, unless we have a bunch of stuff to do. Anyway, all in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Ron motion. had a question. I don't know if you wanted to, but you didn't see his hand. Aye. I kind of glanced at what's going up, but I thought. <laughs> get two minutes at the end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm going to wet my tickle. Item uh, 7, approval of the 2015-16 liquor licenses. We have a list of from us. Um, By the way, we do have one open license if there's a business that wants to start up. I'll make a motion that we approve the liquor licenses listed. Them. So you got to read them all off for... I'll second. Motion, Dan. Second, Kathy. Question, Bill. Yes. Um, so did we not receive another one tonight? A liquor license? No, 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 no. A list of the people. Okay. That is the operator's license. That's yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This Thank you. this is the regular business liquor license. Okay. Thanks. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, I just would like to ask for clarification and for the record that then none of these have outstanding bills with distributors nope. or taxes. Okay. No, nope, we received no notice on that. Um, Chris checked all the uh, tax bills and everybody is is up to date on on taxes. All personal property uh, taxes. Personal are paid. property taxes. Okay. Don has done the okay from the fire department side. Okay. And Chief Mel, Chief Mel did all the background checks. Okay. I do Any other questions? Yes, Patty? I do. Please. Um, with um, the poor house, I see that there isn't any agent. Was there is that required? No, nope. he's an individual. He's Okay. I think an agent is required by a corporation or a LLC. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Hearing right, none, all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 I'm an aye. Any opposed? The motion is carried. Liquor licenses are approved. Uh, approval of Jewel Nineman attending court clerk conference, Appleton, Wisconsin, October 20th through the 23rd. I'll make a motion to approve the attendance for the court clerk conference by Jewel Lindeman. Second. Uh, motion, Kathy, second. Patty, my only uh, question is, uh, is the mileage, if we can lump the mileage off by asking her to take the, the municipal vehicle, mm -hmm. uh, we'll ask and see if that's possible. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. And any other questions? All in favor of Ms. Nieneman taking a court, court clerk conference. Signify by saying aye. 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 I'm an aye. Any opposed? No opposed. Approval of Sergeant Drinkwine attending rifle instructor training in Madison, Wisconsin, July 28th through the 30th. I'll make a motion that we approve Sergeant Drinkwine's uh, rifle training instruction. Motion, Dan. Second. I'll second that. Patty. 
And uh, this is in the chief's budget, correct, sir? Yes, it is. Thank you very much. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Just a quick question that you brought that up about jewels makes sense on this. I see there's no miles on here. Does um, Sergeant Trinkline take his own squad, or does he take the town car? What we've been doing is, is checking. Uh, he does have to take his firearms with him, so he's going to probably take his own okay. squad so he can secure them. Okay. okay. Any other questions? Hearing none, approval of Sergeant Drinkwine's training. Say aye. 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 I'm an aye. Any opposed? No opposed. Motion carries. Item 10, review Public Works Committee recommendations for concrete apron in front of the fire department. Uh, Dan put the note in front of you, or Judy did, I guess, and those were the uh, uh, five. We did, we did send out eight uh, informational packets, and five did respond with quotes. It should have been in your mailbox today. Yeah, it was in the packet that was on the table. Anyway, they ranged. Thank you. They ranged uh, from fifteen thousand eight hundred fifteen to up to twenty-six thousand three sixty-two. And uh, Dad, you want to let know what our recommendation was? Yeah, I mean, we, again, we reviewed all the bids, and what we uh, the committee recommends is going with Rich Weiler Construction um, for the fifteen thousand eight hundred fifteen dollars for the apron. And we would also like to include um, the sidewalks, which would be in front of the municipality, municipal building here. Um, we would take out that chunk and they do that. And also in front of the fire department, go into the, the front entrance, um, the sidewalks up in there, tear that up. Um, it was $3.55 a square foot for the sidewalk. So the total um, would be Approximately seventeen thousand fifty-three dollars and ninety-five cents for the for the total project. Um, we talked to several people who recommend his work, so I I feel that we we'll go we go for it. I'll make that as a motion. Motion by Dan. Is there a second? Why? If I may ask, well, why a motion? I mean, it's in the budget. You had a meeting, you said you're going to do it, why don't you do it? Courtesy to the board. Okay. Bigger items, I like to do that. Smaller items that are budget items, we just go ahead, but I think it's I think it's important for the board to see all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, that pours my reason. I'll second it. Motion to add second. Patty, for the discussion. So. Mr. Chairman, just mm -hmm. a quick question clarification. So this was included in the um, general building capital outlay budgeted. Twenty-five thousand. We had a twenty-five thousand dollar line on it. And there may be some a few additional costs once they tear that up and get into it and see what's underneath because there is some something that. So we may we may have a. I, I can't. We'll definitely be way under budget, but there may be some additional costs there once they figure out what's down there. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of selecting Rich Weiler as the concrete uh, construction uh, for the fire department in the two walkways? Say aye. 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 I'm an aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Item uh, 11 is review, may choose, choose to reuse, discuss holding a second event in September. Uh, I gathered from your conversation that you thought it went well. Mm -hmm. um, I did. Any of the stuff that we've had in other years where we had uh, people jumping around trying to jump in in place and grab stuff as they came in or it was pretty well, well organized? A lot of things come in I never saw. <laughs> I thought it went very well for the time I was there again. I, uh, I thought people, for the most part, was civil. And I waited till the items were out of the vehicles. For the most part, there was some hand holding all the way up to the front of the line. But, but it did. And I commend uh, Patty and Bill for, 
for for going doing what they do. That's a lot of work for a day. I spent a few hours and and God knows we disagree enough up here, but that is a good thing you do. And uh, and it, and it really does. There's a lot of people who, who get a ton of things out of there. Stuff. Stuff. Yeah. And uh, we seem to have a recliner now for the uh, cold storage room, so if you know, people need to take a nap, there's a recliner there to... <laughs> when I went to take it out of there, there was somebody on it. And I, <laughs> I can't quite frankly believe, Bill, that anybody would drop something off in that batter shape and think somebody's going to take it. Mm -hmm. But I guess that's what it is. We'll get rid of it. If... All right, so recommendation from board member to uh, go ahead and schedule it. What was your targeted date, Bill? September 19th, that's what the newsletter said. Um, yes, that's the date. I'll make a motion that we hold another one and uh, choose to reuse on September 19th. Now it's second. Motion already second day. Any further discussion? Just a quick question. Did, were there a lot of items that were left unclaimed, and then what happened to those items? They were recycled properly. Yes, nothing went in the landfill that was recycled. Some went Maybe a few items, but uh, otherwise they went to Hope Store. They went to Bethesda Store. Um, Goodwill. No, they didn't take very little. Oh, oh but yes, some did go to Goodwill. You're right. You're right. Well, certainly all I did as far as the TVs. No, 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 that's no ODC, 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 excuse me. ODC. ODC. I'm sorry. Right. And those, Forget my agencies. When they came to pick up the TVs, um, Bill Lukes from ODC came with his crew, and I am not kidding you with the stack of TVs that we had there. That crew worked so well. They picked up all those TVs, loaded, loaded them in the truck, and I swear it was less than 20 minutes they were gone. Good. That's how fast they were. You're stealing my thunder from my request. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Repetition is good, Bill. More, more we repeat, the more we remember. Uh, any other first discussions here? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. I'm an aye. Any opposed? Maybe we did that twice, maybe? Do they know? Uh, Repetition is good. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> Uh, 12, uh, approve revision to the event permit application. You can see the little notes in red that Judy made on for them. It just kind of cleaned it up a little bit for some of the things that were overbearing that we had asked for that we really weren't that concerned on. We just primarily want to be sure these events have EMS and, and additional conversations with the the fire department and the police department and then hopefully if they're going to be on the roads contact the police department so they have some um, auxiliary help so any changes anything else uh, the only thing that i would like to see added would be on the very last page under sig uh, signature of applicants um, maybe have the print name where a uh, signature uh, is sometimes hard to read sure Otherwise, done. I thought it looked really nice. Okay, motion to approve the new form. Yes. Question? Yeah. Um, so this is the permit, not the permit application? Or this is the this permit is application? This is the application. Okay. So then we might want to change it. Because this is a permit to hold. So this is, and we want to change it to application. permit application or application to hold, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then my question is on. We didn't on, catch that the first time. Yeah. <laughs> On, on uh, one to third page, we are asking them about whether they're having first aid EMS on site, whether they're having the fire department on site, and if not on site, that please notify our fire and EMS, which makes mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm. But did I miss something? We're not asking them if they have any need for law enforcement and whether they're notifying our police department. I'm wondering if maybe we should have some. The one right up above it. Okay. Uh, number of law enforcement utilized. Oh, and then they want the proof of what arrangements were made. Got it. Okay. All right. All right. I'll make a motion to approve the application. Do form with the new changes. Though. With the new changes. Yep. Okay. Motion to add second. Eddie. Eddie. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Member say aye. 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 Am I aye. Any opposed? No opposed. 
Item uh, 13, discuss whether to use fire truck broker or state auction site to sell old ladder truck. There's, uh, in your information, there is a site that's uh, pretty prominent as far as selling fire trucks. Um, my thought was uh, all you need to do is give them a 30-day notice if they, uh, if we want to break the contract and if we are unsuccessful with them selling it by a certain date, then we would still have time to get it on the Wisconsin site and get it sold before our budget year was over. So my thought was to, to go ahead and try a broker, maybe we can get a few more dollars out of it because they do uh, get pretty much nationwide uh, coverage of that site. Don, any other comments on it? No, I guess they are probably one of the biggest brokers in the, in the country for I would make a motion that we uh, first put this out to the broker uh, to sell and see what happens and then go from there. I'll second that motion, but would you name the broker in your motion? Oh, we have, is it Bradley? Bradley. Bradley Mountain. Mm -hmm. Fire Apparatus, LLC. Okay, so and just for the comment period, comments is that we'll watch it, uh, I guess in a couple of months, we'll see what their progress is. And if it gets close to September, uh, we, can, uh, we can give them the 30-day notice that we want to discontinue and then still get it on the state site. All right? Yeah, one question. Um, how, how do they get paid? Paid by a percentage? Right here. Down there. Down there. Okay. 10%. 10%. Okay. Got it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there is incentive. And Mr. Chairman, yep. would the, um, so when this goes to them, at how they just report to us as they're getting offers? Offers, and we just determine when it's high enough or. Well, well, we'll set a price to start with and higher than what we... Okay. I'm looking for that. Because you know how everybody is. You yeah. never buy a car and pay a full price, do you? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Any other questions? We did get a motion, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. Okay, and second. And second. And a clarification on the name. All in favor say aye. 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 I'm at aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Approval event permit for the Southwood County YMCA Triathlon. Uh, Brian? Brian. There we got somebody here. Good evening. Hello. How are you tonight? Good. Good. Uh, board members, uh, you want to take a look at that? Okay, the only thing I haven't gotten the insurance paper yet. You still didn't get that. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve. I mean, Yep. I'll second. Motion made and seconded. Uh, discussion. Uh, just the one thing, uh, Brian, you're indicating uh, the using of uh, uh, water based or uh, chalk. chalk marking, correct? Or how are you going to mark the roads? So we have, we do have uh, arrow signs that we can stick in the, mm -hmm. in the ground. Um, but if we were to mark, I guess my question back to you would be, are we able to use something that, you know, like a chalk paint that, yeah, that, that washes off? Yeah, something that's washable. It's not permanent. What we don't like is what's on the road there currently now. Okay. I mean, your your trail from last year is still probably pretty prevalent on the road, and it just becomes a little annoying to us okay. to have uh, arrows pointing all over the town, and nobody knows what those mean, but right. we know what they're for. but. So any furniture ones, we, it's in our ordinance that they're, they're removable. So okay. uh, some people will use the uh, corn colored cornstarch, okay. that type of stuff, or chalk fine. Because you can, you can yeah, that. Yeah, they'll, they'll all wash up. I'll probably yeah, or you can stick. stick. You can stick some signs on sticks. I was going to say, I'll try to stick to that as much as I can, yeah. too, just so that it's not. Uh, it, it could stop at... Uh, Patty or my house and get a bunch of our old campaign signs, Patty, and, yeah, <laughs> and stick them in the ground. Label over right. <laughs> All right. Any, and uh, any other questions on it or con concerns on it from the board members? Okay. The motion is made and seconded to approve. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 I'm an aye. Anybody opposed? 
Motion has carried. Okay, sir. Hope it goes a lot better than last year. I agree. Hmm. I'm hungry. We'll have the fireman's picnic later afterwards. Yeah. Good. We'll put an arrow on there. Yeah. Food. Seven. Yeah. All right, May disbursement vouchers. Any uh, comments, concerns, questions? Hearing nothing, uh, operator license applicants and renewals. We got a, quite a list here. Yes, and you did receive a new list. Um, I believe there was one added to the front. I don't know which one, and one added to the back. And all have been. Uh, background check by Chief Peterson and approved except for the one on the back side. Mm -hmm. And that you have his letter. Mm -hmm. I made a motion to approve all those people alphabetically. And deny the. And deny the one. Okay. Motion is made to approve those listed for the one year, two year, and temporary license with one denial. Um, any. Is there a second? I'll second. Dan, discussion? Okay, none. All in favor of the operator license application renewals with one denial signify by saying aye. Aye. I'm an aye. Any opposed? No opposed. Moving on to uh, monthly reports, public works. Uh, public works, we've uh, got some of the block topping started. Um, 50, 50th and 56th have been blacked up. Auburn Lane has been blacked up. Uh, we are now waiting for the county to be able to come back with the grinders to do some grinding. Um, we uh, don't expect that back to uh, uh, latest data I got was third to fourth week in July. And they'll be back with the grinding back in the area. So we got everything started and now we wait for them. Um, I did meet uh, with uh, uh, Wood County Highway and discussed uh, the opportunities for us to uh, work some uh, of Lake Avenues into next year's projects. Um, there's a deadline that I will need to meet, uh, which would be approximately September. Paperwork is not out yet to apply for some partial funding. Uh, however, that funding won't be 50-50, uh, uh, or in some cases we've had better granting. It would be probably to 20 to possibly $30,000 uh, towards the project. At the, the first drop cost, it was drawn up at $197,000. They're working on some changes that we discussed, and uh, I'll have a better idea in a few weeks as to what the projected cost of that road would be. Um, I expect that we'll probably put that pretty high on our priorities for next year. Go ahead. And I'm meeting your attendant where you prioritize the different things. Is that the meeting you're talking about? No, no. This one? The, yeah, that was not the uh, Bourbon's STP. Oh. It did not. Uh, it was not an urban collector road, so it couldn't be used as any of those funds. The only roads in our town that we haven't currently done anything with uh, for quite a while would be uh, um, South Park Drive um, and 64th Street that goes on that little corner loop. Um, so. Um, that's probably not something that we we would want to consider doing with the urban STP because there's so many restrictions as far as engineering and that you know the engineering cost of town line road got to be pretty excessive uh, and it ended up uh, uh, we've went into discussion uh, and we're going to meet with county parks the county trail stops at 64th Street and then doesn't start up again until you get to the shelter house area. Uh, there's a strong possibility that working together that we could get some stewardship funding um, and consider that for down the road, maybe a two, three, four year down the road project. 
I want to just do some legwork on it now just to see what's available so that uh, the board can prioritize the stuff for the next next few years. So uh, equipment is all working fine. Any questions on uh, public works? Um, on the grinding, when they come in with the grinder, can mm -hmm. they take a, um, a swipe at grinding down the road over there by the lands club? No, that needs a miller. That Milling needs a miller machine. Milling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Different machine. Okay. The one they're going to come in has got the big teeth, the big teeth that go down. Oh, okay. And chop it up into one inch pieces. But uh, if they get a miller up in this area, then we'll have to be sure that we get on their list. Any other questions for Public Works? Um, which way do we want to go? We'll go to the Airport Commission, Bill. Yes, uh, excuse me. Our last meeting was the, the 4th of June, in which we first, one of the things we talked about was the tree planting. And um, it's up at $28,830. Not so much trees as shrubbery and things like that we're going to be planning. However, we're still working on getting a donation or somebody sponsoring the trees. The trees in that amount is $13,446. $13, and we're hoping that somebody will donate those trees. So the balance from 28830 would be what the... 15000 Yeah, would have to pay. And then we have to consider watering. They have to be watered, and that's not in the, the amount of money. It's uh, the cave nursery, is that what it is? Yeah. yeah. The cave nursery. Uh, the Sue Wins, who I, I know from work. She, she used to work at the mill, and she's... She's the one doing it. So um, we, I had talked to the person today that hopefully will donate the trees, but uh, they're going to get back to me on the answer. On the hangar construction, we have uh, now have plans to build two hangars there. Not we, but an individual does. One will be immediately. The person was going to build it at um, Stevens Point, Stevens Point yeah. Airport, but. Um, he has come over, and we did some rearranging and, and moved it over from one, uh, the distance between another standing hangar and the new one. And the reason we did that is because it'll be better spacing and for moving aircraft, and we won't have to do it at the end. Uh, action on hangar storage, outside storage. We, we have a person there that has a large hangar, and in the wintertime, a lot of things are stored in that hangar. But in the summertime, so more planes it can be rented to, that person moves this stuff out in uh, on airport property, kind of in the town of Grand Rapids. It may be an unlicensed vehicle, it may be whatever it is. And so we're sending them uh, a letter indicating that we feel that that's a violation of airport rules for that, so. Okay. And um, we made a motion to not sell any fuel that is not fuel from the commission. Uh, people can't bring a barrel in there of our tank in there and sell gasoline. No, never should be able to. Well, and, and it's, yes, and, and we're making that rule and regulation fast. And last month I said we, the commission itself makes 10 cents a gallon. And I, and I believe that was wrong. It's five cents a gallon that the commission makes. And I was surprised at that when I asked that question. And uh, one of the correspondents received at that meeting was from uh, Town of Grand Rapids resident. Uh, the address of that is 40 Airport Avenue. And that was where the encroachment was on buildings. Yeah. And then and, and that is all gone. And that whole area in the Town of Grand Rapids indicated as to, in their correspondence and in phone calls to commissioners, 
why that area did not get letters about they had trees in their yard, and it's because they did not have trees in their yard. You were just notifying those we of just, height restrictions? Uh, yes, with height restrictions. Okay. So that's it for the airport meeting. Okay. We're uh, going over, uh, we have a RFP out for a, a FBO office, a FBO person, and uh, we're going to act on that this month. Okay. Any questions out on the airport? Is our FBO leaving, or is it just that it's time it's, to it's look time for a new contract? We extended contract. this contract mm -hmm. three, three months. So. so it's going to be somebody new, but we just don't know. Yes. And to just one other thing, in case it was anybody here, we did have a complaint at the airport that at the terminal that that is a public building, mm -hmm. and there was a pet in that building that, that now has to be removed because some people were contagious too. The kitty cat. The kitty cat. The kitty little gone. kitty cat. Yeah, yes. The little kitty cat, she said. <laughs> Any other questions for Bill? Recycling and solid waste, Bill? Recycling and solid waste, that, you know, this uh, this was one of the one of the best ones that I think we've ever had any place. And I, I just don't say that because we had it. Yeah, uh, a lot of stuff, and like uh, Kathy, you had indicated, what do we do with it? Um, you know, people bring in high chairs and we allow them to bring in high chairs. No, nobody else will take high chairs. Uh, you know, the goodwill will not take them the same way with ironing boards and the same way with car seats. So if they don't go, if somebody don't take those, there's no liability on us. If somebody comes and says, hey, I got this free, I'm going to take it. It's like picking it up beside the road. But in this case, we had three high chairs and some other things. And I tore them all apart and recycled the plastic in the middle and stuff like that. And it was recycled that way. But um, just, just to let you know, the things that came in was three snow blowers and two of them were a motorcycle we got in. And uh, of course, there's only one person who got their hands on that, and that was very fast. But lots of stuff. I didn't think we was going to get rid of some of that stuff, but it's it just amazing. It's just amazing. And the bicycles, oh, too. Bicycles, yeah, yes. Mentioned. 28 bicycles. Yes. We got in, and then three darn good ones. I, I thought they were almost <laughs> brand new. Well, that one was that yeah. one. Yeah. Yes. It's amazing. That one was brand new. And we were saving them for the bike chair, which is through the Wood County Health Department. But they didn't want bicycles that had multiple speeds. So at this time, they don't want them. So we put them in the shed. And then whenever there was uh, young adults out there, I would take them in and say, you can have any bike you want, three or four of them. And then at the end, we had a lot of little BMXs and that kind of bike. And there was five very young people in the crowd. And I says, hey, you boys want to come in here? And there was one girl with them, too. You want to come in here? You can have any bike you want. And then the one had two. And I said, well, you can have all, anybody can have any bike. You can have as many bikes as you want. So that went real good. And we took in and TV. I think I saw them for sale. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, they were happy with taking them out. <laughs> they were. That, yeah. That's all right if they sell them. At least yeah. we're creating something there. Yeah. Um, and well, one of the things is we took in $1,105 worth of televisions. And um, and the, the televisions that go to ODC, and so does the money. $54 worth of tires we, we took in. And um, that was about it. But uh, like Patty had indicated that when Bill from ODC comes over there and takes, he's just amazed and impressed. He brings a wonderful group of people and they load that up in no time at all. And they all got their jobs. Any That's more it. questions for Bill on that? If not, we'll move to the plan commission. Patty, I guess we pretty much know one of the items we yeah. got, and then yep. what else was there? Yep, and then also we uh, approved a land use permit for aluminum carports and storage shed. Okay. Any questions on the plan, Commission? Uh, public buildings, Dan? Well, we've met a couple times um, since the last board meeting. One, the concrete, and we kind of resolved that earlier. 
Um, we're going to be fixing uh, outside lights on the fire station. There's a couple of them that um, that aren't working, and Edwards Electric is going to take care of that. Um, we're going to start working on the removal of the rust on the fire station. Tomorrow, possibly. Tomorrow. And we're still working on the AC for the police department. Um, we'll have somebody look at that tomorrow. And carpet cleaning, we're going to get some uh, quotes for that for the municipal building. That's one thing the girls had asked um, that we take a look at. And the only other thing is we had to, we will be replacing a uh, one of the garage door openers on the fire station door one. Um, it's been fixed and refixed and and cobbled together and it's just time to replace it so uh, other than that that's that's it for now any other questions on public or any questions on public buildings um, legislative has not met but uh, I think Mel and I both had a request for us to consider the speed limit on uh, Wazicha uh, primarily in the area of where the white sand beach is uh, uh, being that it's 35 miles an hour, uh, um, I'm not sure if we uh, would want to read or look at a restriction of just a uh, pedestrian crossing area, if we can restrict speed there or what, but do we need to have uh, uh, some legislative stuff pretty soon and we'll throw that topic on to consider what we want to do. Get any dates picked out yet? Or? No. we got enough this month, I think. Any questions on legislative? Public safety, Kathy? There's been no meetings. Um, I'd just like to comment, I guess, that monthly I meet with the firemen at their volunteer fire department meeting they, where I get to observe what work they do on the equipment and on the trucks and, and get to hear the business that takes place. And um, I'd like to I'll try and start getting more involved in stopping in and seeing the police department and listening to your activities. But unless there's something special brought up, I don't call a meeting. So. Okay. Questions? Patty, economic development, anything going? No, and we haven't set up a date yet, but I plan on doing that with Bill. Okay. Personnel committee, nothing? No personnel issues. Uh, WTA meeting, anybody was at the last one? Yes, I was. Bill, what was happening? It was held in the town of Dexter, the town of Dexter Town Hall, just off the of 80th. Hi, lady. Uh, Kevin Boyer, the Wood County Surveyor, was there. And um, just the history of his position is it's now appointed. Uh, it's always been an elected position. And in the appointed position, it is the surveyor himself, Kevin Boyer. It's not his firm or her firm that gets hired. It's strictly everything is done through him. His office hours are from 2 to 4 p.m. Uh, on Fridays, and that's when you can get a hold of him at the county level. He's best reached by email, he indicated, and his office has town records. He, he carries a lot of the town records in his, in his office, and that's in the courthouse also. Uh, in 1970, they did the remonumentation, and they just finished it up. In 2015 now, all the corners have been done that's necessary. Uh, and except parts of the town of Remington and the town of Hiles. And he reminds members that all his office should be informed of any road, construction, or black topping that you're doing. Because the surveyor has the right to come along and re dig a hole in your black top and find that marker or not find that marker, but the and they would like him to patch it the best he can. He does have carry something along to just pat it down from the highway department. But he says, here's, here, here's his statement. He reminded members that his office should be informed of any road construction, particularly laying out of asphalt to enable them to prepare for the monuments. So. Okay. And one other thing, Doug Krasnow was there giving his schedule, and he also reminded the members that town projects cannot be advertised in order for the county to bid on them. Great. Where of that? And Steve Dickerman. The county doesn't bid, they quote, anyway. 
Steve Dick, who was our um, direct, one of our directors, uh, indicated that the highway funding, and now the, they got it down to $500,000 bonding issue, but the, most of the towns and everybody is in favor of the county's half percent sales tax to go into effect. There's 10 counties in the state of Wisconsin do not have any sales tax now, but in order for them to get their roads fixed, they would have to administer a sales tax. Now, it hasn't gone through yet, but just to tell you how this is going to work, it looks like before it comes out, there will be a formula like the counties will get 50%, the cities will get so much of a percent, and the villages will get so much of a percent, and then the towns. That formula hasn't been, but there will be a referendum. Does Wood County want to accept a, uh, another half percent sales tax used for war road purposes only? And that would be the formula that it would, which I find not very favorable because if you take cities and villages and town don't like the percent that the county's got, they'll just vote down the sales tax. So, and, but that's still in the making. And uh, culvert permitting by the DNR is another proposal and I just attended a meeting and I believe now there's really some changes that you don't have to get a permit for some culverts. Or well, maybe you in public works already know that. That was it for Wood County. And the next one's going to be, oh, in the town of Grand Rapids. Yeah, that's that. <laughs> and the date is uh, June 19th. Come up. All right. Um, any questions on the WTA meeting? If not, we move to reports from individual board members. Bill. Uh, yeah, it's just one thing. Um, like the aqua skiers are having a um, dedication to the person that started uh, started this aqua skiing, aqua skiing in the United States even. Uh, not just in Wisconsin Rapids, but it's from Wisconsin Rapids. Yeah, things like that. Yes, I believe that's who it is. And they're going, the Parks is going to put up a sign by the Historical Society and also anybody else that wants to. And if you remember when the Parks Department put up these, and I'm asking the Plan Commission and Zoning, when, when they put up their signs about the different parks, and I was here at the meeting, and that's when the zoning administrator here says that the county had to get permits for them, mm -hmm. correct? I think so. So would they have to get a permit for this? Maybe it's going up at White Sands, at Red Sands Beach or something. I told them to check. I, I mean, depending on, I guess depending on where it is, if it's sitting right alongside the road in the right-of-way, or, or wherever it is. I mean, if it's way off and it's sitting around by one of their shelter buildings. But I remember what Carl Rail said to Ron, who was here telling about the signs, and they were already up. And Carl Rail says, well, you know, you needed a permit, so the next day he was in there. I, mean, I, I tell you what I do is I don't make those decisions. I refer them to the zoning, oh, building, okay. zoning administrator for the good, the correct ruling. but. And my understanding is the Encourage Foundation is not going to have their... I haven't heard anything. No, no I, the picnic's going to be down in the... Uh, park. In the city. Um, in the to park. promote the... the Tribune. The tri well, but it's not by the Tribune building, no. I don't think. I think it's over by the, um, by Jennings in that yeah. area. So, so it's not coming to the town. Are they going to park them? In the town. It's going to for fireworks. All right, Dan, what do you got? Anything new? No. Fatty. Um, at the Plain Commission last night, um, we were I had um, given them a handout from the Wisconsin Towns Association book. Do we pay for that book? You know, can the Plain Commissioners have um, you a mean the magazine that we get yes. in the mail? Yeah. Do you, does that I have no idea. Okay. You'd have to contact Towns Association. Okay. Email. Mm -hmm. That was it. Um, I just wanted to acknowledge our road crew, uh, board members here know, but um, for others to, uh, that we received a little note from a resident in the town who gave special thanks to the road crew who were working in the road right away and the great work that they did. 
she um, commented that the crews worked with complete skill and proficiency and gives a hats off to them. So I'd like to extend that recognition. And I also want to remind people again, as well as what was just said earlier, that the celebration, the Grand Rapids Firemen Celebration on June 27th, please mark your calendars. Please come down and support your local fire department. Um, that's their only fundraising that they do, and the money that is raised has gone towards apparatus and supplies, and it, it really goes a long way for, for your local community. That's all. Judy, anything? Mm -hmm. Got a couple things. Uh, I've had a call from uh, a person that's representing C Click Fix. That's the uh, web application that the city of Wisconsin Rapid has put in place where you can take a picture of a pothole or, or a broken sign or whatever and report it. And uh, she wanted to know if, uh, uh, if we wanted a uh, demo of it. And I said, well, what's the approximate cost? She says it typically is a dollar per person in your township. So in other words, $7,600 to report our one or two potholes a year we have. So I'm guessing unless I hear something different from you folks that you're not interested in seeing a demo, right? Uh, just on a, on a wonderful note, I need to uh, let everybody know that doesn't know already that Grand Rapids ranks the fifth safest town in Wisconsin. So wonderful uh, reporting. We also ranked 64th nationally. Now, that's saying a lot about our community. Uh, we're also rated, uh, rated as the 20th best town to raise a family in Wisconsin. The, the data that they use uh, are, is FBI um, universal crime reporting statistics. They uh, look at the unemployment rates, the poverty rates, household incomes, schools and colleges, and or owner occupancy rates. And we were in a classification for populations from 5,000 to 1,000 population. <coughs> City of Wisconsin Rapids also reported well. They reported 15th in the state. So what I'm saying is Southwood County area is a great place to live. And Patty and I have had some discussion on this already. And hopefully we're going to, uh, I have a meeting with the mayor coming up. Uh, I'm going to try to put some seed with him and get you guys together. Um, I think this is something that uh, we need to toot our horn. This is very wonderful data. It's done by what's called the Niche Group. Uh, they came out of Columbia University. They were formed in 2002 as College Prowler Incorporated. They are a statistical uh, analytical corporation that searches data. A lot of their data that you find if you go on to some of the uh, home, home buying sites, they, uh, they will tell you the, the schools and how they rate. This is where the data is coming from, these types of groups. So uh, there was another report from a company called Value Penguin, which rated us fourth. So again, two report, different reporting agencies uh, reported it. Um, Safe Cities uh, last year reported us fifth. Uh, I've seen their reports for Texas, but Wisconsin is not yet out. So I expect uh, following the same pattern, we're going to see some additional good reports on uh, population. So any questions? If not, I would accept the uh, any additional items for the next. Whoops, I got to go to public comment period yeah. first. I'm sorry. Public comment. Anybody else wish to follow up on any comments, Shirley? Yeah. Um, going back to that item about putting having a house, if you have uh, buildings, and um, I thought that correct me if I'm wrong, but the or I thought the ordinance got changed. You, you still have two years in order to put a house on there, or that got eliminated, and you could not have any buildings on there at all. I mean, you couldn't have uh, put up a garage, say, before, before that. I thought that got changed. I would have to refer you to the book, Building is Eliminated. I can't tell you offhand. Patty, unless you don't. I, I, thought, I don't want to say either way, because I thought there was something about a home with a it used to be, you remember, and then I thought they got changed with some issues. I thought it was all taken out that it's strictly no garages on 
vacant that's, ones. That's what I thought too. I, I thought so too, and I thought that it was. Um, we should do some looking up on it because I also thought that it was any that were there existing would have been grandfathered. Well, yes, obviously. it would. It would be right. grandfathered as a non-conforming lot, right? Right. Now. right. Yeah. So we should. We have. We that. even have a list of those. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure we do. Probably. Anything else? Anybody else? Motion to adjourn. No. Oh, okay. Next agenda, any item specific that you want? If not, do your normal stuff. Let us know when uh, it gets closer to the, the meeting. Um, item 21 is a motion to adjourn by me. Bill. I'll second. Second by Dan. All in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.